Hi, my name is Jim Brown and I, I'm going to try to show you how to make a copper rolling ball sculpture. And in these videos I'd like to try to zoom in closer on the rolling ball sculpture so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. And hopefully that will help you when you try to make your own rolling ball sculpture. Alright, so follow along. Okay, so I usually start my rolling ball sculptures by building the frame. So I'm going to do that first. And so I'll start off with a hook and then the first foot, the second foot, and then I like to go up to the top and build uh, some uh, kind of start for the ball. And then I like to start building the back side. There's a good crimp it off right here. So at this point I'm going to start building the back side. Build a couple of feet to the back and then build some more uh, starting uh, spot for the rolling ball sculpture and then I'd like to tie it off. Tie about right there. Get my wire cutter and definitely you need the uh, the copper wire cutters. Don't use pliers or you'll just have a really rough time trying to cut the wire. The, wire, the copper wire cutters makes life so much easier. So you can see it kind of has a maybe an interesting look there. Kind of maybe bend it up a little bit to get it the way I like it. In this case I'm going to give it a little interesting look there maybe. And kind of bend it a little bit. I like to to have play around with it a little bit so they don't all look exactly the same. But I like to kind of make the smaller ones all be sort of similar, so we'll do it that way. All right, and I like to have the back one a little higher than the front one so that the ball can roll downhill. Okay, so that's how my initial frame is going to look. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of water soluble flux, and here's the water soluble flux. Burzomatic plumbing flux. So I'll get a little bit of flux on there and then start my propane torch. Get it good and hot, which usually takes about 15 seconds, 10 15 seconds to heat up real good and hot. And then my lead free plumber solder. I always like to use lead free so that if anybody touches it or touches the solder it won't hurt them. And when the solder flows like water you know that's uh, going to be good. Okay so that's the start. Nice good frame. Okay so what I've done is I've measured the sculpture uh, height and it's about six inches tall. So what I'll need to do is uh, pull out about six uh, units of copper wire, which my units are about, uh, I don't know, a cubit, about 18 inches or so. And that seems to be just a little bit uh, more than what I need uh, to build the length of the track for the rolling ball sculpture. So we'll cut it right there. And hopefully that'll be enough. So then what I do is I m match up the ends of the wire and pull it to the other end. And then I just kind of make it about marble width by squishing it with my needle nose pliers. And uh, test marble here and just make sure that it's the right width and that'll be my track width guide. 
I like to bend the end of it up a little bit so the marble won't uh, go backward. Uh, it'll just only go forward. And so there we have it. A little bit closer maybe. Alright, so that's a good start. Alright. So now I'll put it on the uh, frame and solder it down. So I'll use my wooden clothes pins to, to hold it on while I try to solder it. This seems to be the easiest way for me to do it. I uh, can't seem to get my family to hold it on. Uh, otherwise that would be probably a better way to do it. But, I don't know. They don't like to be used that way. <laughs> don't understand why. Alright, so I get my... I flexed it. I put my propane torch on it. Just a little while until it soldered down real good. And that seems to be a little bit off, so I'm going to pull it down and then solder it. Because I want it to be touching. And don't worry if your clothespins uh, catch fire. Uh, they won't burn very much. Okay, so I got one side soldered down. Now I can hold it. It'll hold down so I can uh, solder the other three sides. And again, you want uh, each of the sides to be uh, touching so you get a good contact when you solder. You won't be bridging a gap. Bridging a gap is bad because uh, you'll have a weak solder joint at that point. So that's why you always want to make sure that you have a, a good flowing amount of solder so you don't have a cold solder joint. Alright, so I've started the track on, and now we'll let that cool off because it's going to be hot now, and we'll get back to it in just a minute. <laughs> 